Okay, here uh, I'm going to introduce the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, um, and they'll probably give it to you in two parts. Um, part one, I, I, I don't know, it, it's kind of weird, um, and I don't know why they do it, but, but they do. And I was tested over it, so uh, I, I thought I'd include it in the video, just in case you guys are too. Um, part two is actually the, mo the more useful part of this, okay? Um, part two basically says, um, you know, we know how to take um, the antiderivative of, of, a fun of, a, of a function, okay? It ha had the A and the B not be there, we'd just find big F plus C, okay? Well, what we're going to do here is we're just basically, we're evaluating um, an integral um, over some type of inner interval okay and um, it's a simple formula it's just antiderivative of b minus antiderivative of a so what we want to do is just find the f uh you know the antiderivative of the function plug b minus plug a in okay so let's just do an example of that one real quick okay because that this is the more useful uh, method okay so here i've got um he, here's our you know general uh uh, form right there. Okay. Now the first thing we we'll want to do is we'll just what first thing we're just going to take the general antiderivative of this. Okay, and that's just going to be x to the fifth or to the fifth over five. Okay, plus x squared over two. Okay. Now normally we'd write plus c. Um, the notation now is going to be four one. We just put a bar on it. Okay. And that implies that we're gonna, we're gonna plug four in for the x's, and then we're gonna subtract um, the same thing with uh, one evaluate. So let's just go ahead and do this. Um, it's easy to mix things up here, so why don't you go ahead and put this in parentheses, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go four, okay? Minus. Okay, see how I did that? And that's the same as the formula. That's the antiderivative, which here's the antiderivative. Okay, and we just plug B in, and then we subtract the same thing. We, we just plug A in. Okay, and that's what I did right there. So, 4 to the 5th. What, what is 4 to the 5th? I should uh, just do my calculator. Wow, that's like 1024. So, that's uh, 1024 divided by 5 plus 16 divided by 2, that's 8, okay, minus 1 fifth plus 1 half, okay, so you can either add this up yourself, I, I'd recommend you'd probably want to go ahead and just uh, use your calculator uh, just to uh, avoid anything, um, you don't have to, but let's just go 10, 24, over fifths plus eight minus one fifth and then we're also going to go minus one half remember because the negative sign uh, does distribute distributes okay minus plus eight minus point two minus point five and it comes out to be approximately 212 square units, okay? Um, you'll probably want to write an exact answer down, okay, if there's a square root or something like that. So um, that, that's basically how we, um, we uh, evaluated that, okay? Um, now next, let's go back to this other wacky one, which I'm not really sure why they do it this way, but let's just go ahead and throw it back out here. Okay, so here's this more complicated one, um, and notice that um, you know here it is. So I'm gonna actually use the part two to do part one, which is kind of weird. You know why they did it? I don't know, but um, let's just go ahead and do it. So what's the general antiderivative of this thing? Okay, um, this general antiderivative of this one over that's uh, actually inverse tangent of 
t plus c. So that's a general antiderivative. So let's just go ahead and write inverse tangent of t. But since you know we have our new little formula here, we're going to use our our bracket right there, aren't we? Okay. And that's going to be equal to tangent negative one x. Okay, minus inverse tangent of zero. Okay, so let's go a little further. Um, we can't really do anything with uh, inverse tangent of x, so I'm just going to write it again. Um, now, what angle is going to give me an inver a tangent of zero? Okay, if, if theta is zero, then sine is zero. Uh, sine divided by cosine of zero is going to give me zero, so that's just minus zero. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here with this, and it looks like we're just back down to tangent of x. But, in the beginning of the problem, it says that we have to take the derivative of that guy. Okay, so what is the derivative of inverse tangent? Well, of x. Just right there, isn't it? Now notice, it looks like all we did is we just took, you know, the upper limit of integration and we stuck it in down here, didn't we? You know, we just stuck it in and, you know, that, that, that's kind of a safe bet. So, um, I don't know, let's, let's test our theory and see if it works. Let's see if it works again if we were to plug, let's, let's say that... Yeah, let's do it this way. Let's just see if this works, okay? So, here we got that. We know we know it's going to end up being inverse tangent, okay, um, of t, and it's a 0 to x. So that's going to equal inverse tangent of 0, okay, minus inverse tangent of x, right? Okay, and this guy right here, that's just going to be 0, and this is going to be negative, tangent negative 1 of x. Now remember, we're going to go back here, we're going to take the derivative of it, okay? So what's that going to give us? That's going to give us negative 1, or 1 plus, okay? So be be a little weary, don't just go uh, plugging everything in, uh, you know, and, and assume that works every time. Um, the, the main thing is we ended up using part two to do part one, okay? Um, so that, that's kind of how we did that there. So um, I just thought I'd throw that in because they tested me over it. And if they tested me over it, they might test you over it. So I, And I just wanted to kind of show you that, you know, if, if you get in any trouble, uh, just use part one of the theorem, uh, or use part two to get part one done. So that's all I have. Thanks for watching, and more to come.